Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Will, and today I wanted to help you guys with a gem guide. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to start from the very beginning and work up to the more advanced stuff. I'm going to start with how do you gem? <laughs> how do you craft gems? How do you use them? Things like that. So it's pretty straightforward. You're actually going to go to the stone cutting table to modify your gems and make them usable for your gear. And the best way to level your stone cutting up is just simply by making bricks, making blocks, making bricks, and making bricks. So you just go mine a bunch of stone, turn them into blocks, get your XP. Once you hit 50, take those blocks that you made, turn them into bricks, give you more XP. And then you can take those bricks you've made and then turn them into lodestone bricks to get you more and more XP. Um, there are four different tiers of gems in this that you'll be focusing on. You have flawed, so you have this whole flawed category. You have the standard ca standard gems, you have brilliant gems, and then you have finally, way down here, you have pristine gems. So you'll see all these pristine options which I'll explain a little bit more in a second. But each of those will require different tiers. So at level zero, you can do flawed gems. At level 50, you can do standard gems. At level 100, you can do brilliant gems. And then at 150, you can do these um, pristine gems, which are gonna be your best one. So at 150, you can make all of the different gem types. So you wanna focus on getting your gem crafting to 150. It'll be super useful for end game because those pristine gems, people just go to the market, they buy them, they slot them into the really awesome gear they have and they're able to customize their gear. So if you make the gems for them, they don't have to, and you can make money. So keep that in mind. This is a good end game skill. Just like, uh, so just like engineering is a really good end game one for your, your housing and things like that. It's, it's a really good one. That's going to pay off a lot better in the end. Do keep in mind pretty much all of the, these, um, like the flawed and the standard are basically useless. They're not worth much of anything. Brilliance are nice. You can get some money out of those and you also, they're worth using. And then pristine are obviously what everyone's aiming for. So um, as you're mining, you'll start getting some of these materials. So you'll get these, what are just called flawed malachite, for example. And then you're able to cut those flawed malachite at the stone cutting table by using soul motes and then the flawed malachite you've gotten to make a cut malachite, which then gives you the bonuses. So once you cut it, it becomes kind of enchanted, I guess you could say, and that gives it the abilities that you're looking for. So as you're mining and you're gathering these, you can definitely still cut these as well. So for example, these are level zero crafting, just like the stone blocks are. But I get 130 XP for um, cutting one of these versus 36 for stone cutting. So these are roughly worth about four times as much. So basically for every one of these I get while I'm mining, it saves me 16 stone worth of mining or of gathering that I have to do later. So gather these up, cut them up. Again, they're not worth much. Don't expect to sell them for anything. A lot of them you just throw them on the market for 0.3 gold or whatever. And then maybe sell them or just, or just scrap them or just give them away or whatever you want to do with them. But... As you're leveling up, as you're tearing up, you can make better and better um, gems. Uh, the higher the level the nodes you're mining are, so like stone, iron, silver are basically going to give you flawed. I think at silver, you can start getting standard gems. Uh, but once you get to like level 100, level 110, 150, when you start getting to the, the lodestone ore and the star metal ore, that's where you can start getting the better gems. You can start getting brilliant gems out of those, the uncut versions, obviously, that you can then cut to convert into... The gems you're looking for to give you the buffs that you need or just ones to make and sell but as you kind of move through these tiers um you'll, you'll kind of find as you're leveling what kind of gems are important to you for your gear plus the kind that people are looking to buy there are a few specific gems that are like super important and then people are going to be using them always because they're designed for specific builds so i mainly have one for the tank and one for the healer that are super important and then i actually have a couple for dps that you might consider that are really nice as well so I actually have this nice little graph I'm going to pull up to show you the two different versions. So it's important to keep in mind that all of your different gems can be slotted either or. So as you're seeing here, you have Gambit or Elemental Ward. So put into a weapon, it's going to give you 12% damage when stamina is not full. And then, or if you put it into an armor, it's going to give you 2% elemental damage absorption. So that's just, that's just describing basically whether it's going to be in a weapon or in a piece of armor, and that'll tell you what bonus you're going to get. But back to the actual chart here, there's a couple of specific ones I wanted to break down, as I mentioned. So starting with the amber, it's a super important one for healers because you'll be, you'll be able to put this into your secondary weapon. So as a healer, you're pretty well restricted to using just a life staff because it's the only thing that can heal in the game currently. So you're dumping all of your attribute points into focus, making any other weapon irrelevant for you, more or less. But if you slot in an amber into that weapon, um, two things are going to happen. So firstly, let's say you're picking a, a great axe as your secondary. If you slot this amber into your great axe, it's going to give you X amount of, of nature damage depending on what tier gem you're using. So whether it's flawed, regular, um, brilliant, or pristine will determine 
the modifiers you're going to get here. So the modifier itself, not that important, so we're not going to focus on it. This, I feel like this chart's really useful because as these percentages change and stuff over the months and years, um, this will still stay relevant. So I also like to use it for that purpose specifically. But the Amber is going to convert X amount of damage into nature damage of that weapon. Plus, damage is going to scale off your weapon stat, the base weapon stat. So typically, a uh, great action would be strength or focus, whichever is higher. So if you put a Amber inside of a great axe, it now scales up a focus instead of strength, which is really, really important for you because if you've got 300 focus, you can still do decent work with that great axe. Granted, it won't be as good as it would be inside of on a strength build because you get this, the every 50 tier strength bonuses that you would that you would be getting. But it makes you good enough to be able to handle solo content, step in and do some DPS when the time requires. The second gem I want to talk about is going to be the Carnelian. This is a big one for tanks. This is an absolute must have for tanks. So the Amber is like a really nice thing to have that can make your life a lot easier as a healer. But as a tank, you have to run the Carnelian. And that's because whenever you activate a taunt as a tank, which is what you use to draw aggro and keep mobs attacking you so they don't kill all your teammates, you're going to generate bonus threats during that time period. So if you want to use um, Shield Bash, you get a six second taunt, I think. You're also going to get that X percentage of taunt, which is significant amount on everything you do during that duration. So during that six second period, I am just generating so much threat that people can't look away from me. So it's a must have for your tank. And then there's a couple of ones I want to talk to you specifically about DPS. You can kind of pick how you want to do this, but Moonstone is one and also the Emerald is one. These are kind of hand in hand, uh, but they're opposites, if that makes sense. So the Emerald is going to do bonus damage against targets with less than 30% health. So this even works on bosses that are getting lower on health. As a DPS player, the more damage you can do, the better. And if whenever an enemy is below 30% health, if you're going to do bonus damage, 10, 20, 30, 40%, whatever it might be, that's incredibly beneficial. And the Moonstone, on the other hand, it works the same way, but it's against players. So this is going to be a PvP based one that's super useful. So Opal's a really, really good one too, because this one you can kind of control. This is going to give you bonus damage while your stamina is not full. So if you always balance keeping your a little bit of your stamina used up, you're, you're going to be getting this continuous bon bonus damage, which is really cool. And then something to keep in mind for endgame as well, and this can apply to pretty much everybody, is um, the elemental damages. Depending on the type of mobs you're fighting, if you're consistently fighting a bunch of the same mobs all the time, or you're running a specific dungeon that has those mobs have a specific weakness, it might be useful to have weapons that give you those bonuses. So for example, the ruby gives you damage converted to fire, sapphire is arcane, amethyst is void. These will give you bonuses to those things. They will also scale off your base weapon stat or whatever the opposite is, just in case. Most likely your strength or whatever you're using is going to be much higher. So you're not going to have to worry about that in this case. Focus is going to be the big one for the Amber. The rest of these probably won't impact you too much. And that's going to be kind of the, the armor side of it's much simpler to explain. Uh, you have either elemental resistances, you have physical resistance, or you have the specific type of attack resistance. So the things that did damage before will now do damage absorption. So like the Amber converted to nature damage, it now does damage absorption. Same thing with Amethyst is now... Um, void damage absorption instead of void damage. So that kind of breaks it down pretty easy. The other ones that would originally give you bonus damages will now give you different types of damage resistance. So the Moonstone, which gave you bonus damage to players below 30% health, will now give you a bonus damage absorption to slashing attacks. So you can kind of pick thrusting attack res resistance, um, slash resistance. The Onyx is going to be a really popular one because this is just an overall physical damage resistance. This is a lower percentage than, let's say, the Slash specifically. Let's say this is 4%. This will be 2.5% resistance, something like that. But keeping in mind, when you're using these, you're probably going to want to slot all of that same gem into your armor socket. So if you're going to run an Onyx, you're probably going to want to run all Onyxes. Because you're gonna, it gets a little... These percentages aren't high enough independently. So you wouldn't want to run one Slash, one Thrust, one Strike, because they wouldn't do much. You're getting a couple of percent resistance. But having 15 20% overall, pretty beneficial. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. And that's more or less the uh, the armor side of it. One one kind of important one to keep in mind is the Carnelian again. So just like it generates threat on the attacking side, it lessens threat on the armor side. So a lot of healers that generate a lot of threat and a lot of DPS that generate a lot of threat might want to use this to help reduce the amount of threat they're pulling in on themselves. Just it will make the tank's job a little easier as well as making you stay alive because you're squishy. Uh, there are better ones to use overall, but this could be something, a solution if you're finding yourself pulling a lot of threat. That's more or less it, guys. That's the whole video. Um, I think it's going to end up being longer than eight minutes, but uh, that's going to break it down, give you an explanation of how to level it, kind of the easiest way to level it. The four different tiers, flawed, standard, brilliant, pristine, 
And then the, some of the key gems to focus on as you're playing through the game. Again, I did have that up. Feel free to take a screenshot have that list of the different gems available. And if this video is helpful for you guys, drop a like, subscribe for more content like this. I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to do this stuff. I've been making a lot of New World videos. You'll see it. I'll link it. You'll see it actually right over here, probably right now. It's showing you my New World playlist. <laughs> but that's going to be uh, where a lot of my New World stuff is. And I'm trying to make good content. So the more you guys can like, comment, things like that, let me know how the videos are. See if they're good enough, if they're if they're, you know, jiving well, it'll help me with my future content. So I really appreciate any of that engagement I can get and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.